Hello and welcome to Star Diary, the podcast from the makers of BBC Sky at Night magazine. You can subscribe to the digital edition of the magazine by visiting iTunes, Google Play or Apple News, or to the print edition by visiting skyatnightmagazine.com. Greetings listeners, and welcome to Star Diary, a weekly guide to the best things to see in the Northern Hemisphere's night sky. As we are based here in the UK, all times are in BST. In this episode, we'll be covering the coming week from the 16th to the 22nd of September. I'm Ezzie Pearson, the magazine's features editor, and I'm joined today by astronomer Katrin Rayner. Hello, Katrin. Hi, Ezzie. So what do we have coming up for us this glorious September? Well, we have a fab week ahead. In fact, I've renamed this the Super Star Diary episode. Ooh, (laughs) that does sound good. We better get cracking on then. It's mainly down to an exciting event in the early hours of the 18th, so are you ready for this? I suppose so. (laughs) (laughs) We have a full moon, which is a super moon, and not only that, but there's also going to be a partial lunar eclipse, so there's a lot happening. And we also have the autumn equinox on the 22nd, so we can start waving goodbye to summer, so I'm sure that makes lots of people very sad. (laughs) Makes astronomers happy. I'll start with the moon and Saturn this week. On the 17th, we have a bright 98% lit waxing moon sitting very close to Saturn in the early hours of the morning. This is going to be a beautiful sight to see. You will have a good view of them all night of the 16th, but you may want to turn your gaze to the south at around midnight when Saturn will be high in the sky into the 17th. So Saturn's going to be located above the moon, to the left of the moon, and both are going to be easy to spot. But the 18th is the big in. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's a key date for your diaries. We have a full moon this morning, but not only is it a full moon, it's the super moon and the partial lunar eclipse. So we should break this down into something a bit more digestible, I think. That is a lot going on all at once. What does that all actually mean? Well, we'll start off with the lovely name of the September moon. So this month's full moon is called the harvest moon. And it's so called because of how close it occurs to the autumn equinox. I do feel as moon name goes, that is one of the ones that's more understandable. (laughs) Yes. It's the harvest moon because it occurs at the harvest. Harvest time. Yeah, it kind of explains. It's like descriptive, isn't it? As we know, you know, the full moon, very bright. And at this time, it rises early in the evening. And because it's close to the autumn equinox, the moon rises and sets at near similar times each evening when it's close to its full phase. And as you mentioned, you know, historically, these times of rising and setting made it a perfect time for farmers to harvest crops under the bright moonlight. And I think that's a lovely thing to think about, you know. This month's full moon, it's also a super moon. You know, this is where the full moon coincides with its closest point or perigee to Earth. And it's the second super moon in a row out of four, with the next two super moons happening in October and November. It is a very super moon heavy year this year. It does appear slightly bigger or brighter in the night sky. You're not going to notice just with observing. If you put two pictures side by side, you can notice the difference. But it's always a good excuse to look at the full moon because it is an absolutely beautiful thing to see. Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of people don't agree with the term supermoon, but I think it's a good term to get people interested. It comes from astrology which a lot of astronomers are wary about. Let's put it politely. But as you said, it does always get it into the headlines. It gets it into the news and it gets people looking up. And hopefully it might get them started on a more in-depth look at the hobby. Yeah. And I think there's two ways of looking at it. Super because it's big or bigger. And super because it is super, super to look at. So (laughs) the 18th is going to be fab. And we also have a small partial lunar eclipse in the early hours of the 18th as well. So it's going to be visible from Europe, North and South America, Africa and parts of Asia. So just to kind of briefly explain, you know, a lunar eclipse will only occur when the moon is full, which we know it will be on the 18th, and Earth is between the moon and the sun. So the Earth blocks sunlight from reaching the moon and casts a shadow onto the surface of the moon. But just remember, this isn't a total lunar eclipse. It's just a partial one. So it's going to look like a bite has been taken out of the moon and the size of the bite or shadow on the moon will depend on how the Earth, moon and sun are aligned. 
the total duration of the partial clips is just four hours long. So if you want to be there from the start to the end, be prepared for kind of a long morning. So at 1.41am, the moon will start to move into Earth's weak outer penumbral shadow. You're not going to notice much of a difference in the appearance of the moon at this stage. However, as the moon moves closer into Earth's dark inner umbral shadow, you will start to notice a difference in the darkness of the lunar surface. And in terms of where you want to be looking during this time, you want to keep an eye on the northeast limb of the moon to see the effect of the partial eclipse. And as the moon eventually meets Earth's umbral shadow at around 3.12am, the northeast limb is going to look slightly darker. It's not a, a huge partial lunar eclipse. I mean, the word partial, I suppose, does mean, you know, it's not full, but it's just over 8% of the moon's diameter is obscured by Earth's shadow at maximum eclipse, which happens at 3.44am. So I think you're going to notice it, you know, even though it's just a small percentage of the moon's diameter. But yeah, as the moon keeps moving in its orbit, it's going to leave Earth's umbral shadow at around 4.15am and the penumbral shadow at 5.47am when the partial eclipse will end. We should make clear this is a partial lunar eclipse. When it's a full lunar eclipse, that's when you get that, what some people call the blood moon. But when the moon goes very red, that won't be happening this time around. It will just appear to get slightly darker. However, it might wet people's appetites. And we do actually have a couple of good lunar eclipses coming within the next year. So there's one on the 14th of March, which will be almost total in the UK. But for our listeners out in the US, it will be a total eclipse that will happen then, a total lunar eclipse. But then on the 7th of September, for us in the UK, that's when we'll have our next total lunar eclipse. So you won't have to wait long to see the red moon. Just maybe use this as a practice run. Yeah, <laughs> I loved seeing the lunar eclipse. I think it was 2015. And I remember stepping out into the garden and just looking up and thinking, wow, it was, I mean, it was the first one I'd ever seen. So next year... I'll be sure to watch that one and try and get my photography skills up to scratch. We can take some good pictures this time around. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to read more up on the partial lunar eclipse, there is a great guide in this month's Sky at Night, which is detailed in the Big Three section. Saturn is still close to the moon on the 18th as well, but this time it's located to the bottom right of the moon and we have the opportunity to see Titan again, the largest moon of Saturn passing south of Saturn's southern pole at five past midnight. So if you are planning on watching the partial lunar eclipse a bit later on, you may as well jot this event in your diary too. And as we have previously mentioned, new Titan is really well placed at the moment as it is on the Earth facing side of its orbit. So as the morning go on the 18th, it's going to be a real treat, providing it isn't cloudy. You can tick five things off your list. You've got the full moon, a supermoon, a partial lunar eclipse and Saturn and Titan, the largest moon of Saturn. That's a lot of moon stuff, some around our planet and some around other planets. There was a fairly big caveat on that one, which is if the weather cooperates, which hopefully it will. That's one of the things about the lunar observing. Even if you miss the eclipse, if it's cloudy, chances are there'll be some break in the clouds. And if it's a full moon, the moon will be up throughout the entire night. So you just need to keep an eye out and try and make advantage of any break in the clouds when they happen. I always like to say partially cloudy does mean it's partially clear. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. And manage your expectations. Yeah, could be cloudy, but hey, it could be great. Mm. So... Let's just hope it is clear on the 18th. Solar system wise, you know, well, I have spoken about Saturn quite a lot, but from mid September, Uranus is well placed, reaching a high altitude. And all week, you can find the ice giant near the Pleiades. So if you can locate the Pleiades star cluster in Taurus, it's going to help you in turn to locate Uranus. It's going to be at a magnitude of plus 5.74, so it is in naked eye territory but you will need to be in a location with dark skies to see it. Uranus is one of the trickier ones to spot, but that doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't try hunting it down. You do need to have very good eyesight to be able to see it with the naked eye. It is technically possible, but you need to be in a dark sky site. I probably won't ever see it because I wear glasses. Um, <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Though apparently, my, as I'm getting older, my eyesight's coming back around the other way. So maybe <laughs> I'll okay. find that sweet spot. I look forward to that day. You come on Star Diary and tell us you've seen it with your naked eye. <laughs> on the 16th and for the rest of the week, we have Mars and Jupiter in the early morning sky. And on the 21st, we have the shadow of one of the moons of Jupiter crossing the gas giant. 
We have Ganymede transiting the planet between 3.40 a.m. and 5.22 a.m. And Ganymede is Jupiter's largest moon. And just for comparison, Ezzy, it is larger than the planet Mercury with a mean radius of 2,634 kilometres. So it's a whopper. It always makes me think back to that time when people were talking about, you know, is Pluto a planet? And it, it got demoted to dwarf planet status. And it feels like it should be a very easy thing to define. But there are some moons which go around a planet, but they're bigger than the smallest planet. But because they're going around a planet, that means they're a moon, not a planet in their own right. And it's all very difficult. (laughs) I think there's probably a lot of people out there that are still very sad and annoyed that Pluto got demoted. Oh, there are. Absolutely. (laughs) It's still a planet, I always say. It's just a dwarf planet. Oh, yeah, that's very true. Yes, it's just just got the word dwarf in front of it now. But yeah. Exactly. Neptune is our opposition today on the 21st, which means it's opposite the sun in the sky. Neptune is the eighth planet from the sun and the fourth largest planet. And on the night of the 21st, it will be visible for most of the night, reaching its highest point in the southern sky at around midnight. So it'll be shining at a magnitude of plus 7.81. So you're not going to see it with the naked eye. You're just going to have to make sure you have some observing equipment to hand if this is something you want to try and see. And obviously it's best seen through a telescope and in darker sky areas. So on the morning of the 22nd, we have a 77% lit waning gibbous moon located close to the Pleiades and Uranus. So I think this area of the sky is going to be really pretty to view. We have the shining moon, we've got the glittering Pleiades and the soft green blue of the planet Uranus. And we also have the autumn equinox in the northern hemisphere. This is the astronomical definition of the autumn season, where the seasons are centred around the equinoxes and solstices, compared to the meteorological seasons, where each season is divided into three months and based on average monthly temperatures. So the autumn equinox will occur at 1.43pm. The sun's going to be directly above Earth's equator and it's going to be crossing from north to south. So at the equinoxes, spring or autumn, the days and nights are approximately equal in length. Yes, we probably should say the equinox is when you've got a day of equal length. So the day and the night are the same length. It happens because if you imagine Earth's tilt, its axis, it's when it's neither tilting towards or away from the sun. I want to say it's parallel to it, but that's not exactly what's happening. But it's kind of like side on. Whereas when it's one of the solstices, that's the longest day or the longest night, depending on which solstice it is. And that's when the tilt of the axis is sort of pointing in towards the sun or away, depending on, you know, which pole you're looking at. You know, we have mentioned that it's the start of autumn, And then in October, we've got the clocks going back to look forward to as well. So I'm excited about it. I love the autumn. So Mm -hmm. I'm all up for the autumn equinox. Absolutely. And hopefully we've got lots of good stargazing to look forward to in the coming months. But that's it for this week, at least. So thank you for taking us through that, Catherine. And if our listeners at home would like to get even more stargazing updates, please do subscribe to the podcast and we'll be back next week with even more highlights. But to summarise this week again, from mid-September, Uranus is going to be well-placed and located near to the Pleiades, so do keep an eye out for that throughout the week. On the 16th, Mars and Jupiter are going to be visible in the early morning sky. On the 17th, an almost full moon will be sitting very close to the planet Saturn. The best view is going to be around midnight and it will be found towards the south. The 18th is the full moon. It's a harvest moon, a supermoon, a partial lunar eclipse starting at 1.41am and then finishing around 5.47am in the UK. Saturn's position is going to be close to the moon again, and you'll also be able to see Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, passing underneath the South Pole. On the 21st, Ganymede transits the planet Jupiter, and on the 22nd, it's the autumn equinox in the Northern Hemisphere as well. So lots going on and we'll hopefully see you back here next week for even more stargazing highlights. Goodbye! 
If you want to find out even more spectacular sights that will be gracing the night sky this month, be sure to pick up a copy of BBC Sky at Night magazine, where we have a 16-page pull-out sky guide with a full overview of everything worth looking up for throughout the whole month. Whether you like to look at the moon, the planets or the deep sky, whether you use binoculars, telescopes or neither, our sky guide has got you covered with detailed star charts to help you track your way across the night sky. From all of us here at BBC Sky at Night magazine, goodbye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Star Diary podcast from the makers of BBC Sky at Night magazine, which was edited by Lewis Dobbs. For more of our podcasts, visit our website at skyatnightmagazine.com slash podcasts or head to Spotify, iTunes or your favourite podcast player. Mm-hmm.